Studio 54, of course, an important part of musical history and nightclubbing. Uh, and of course, it started in 1977. We're going to be reviewing the new documentary on Boys on Film today. So Raj, you haven't actually seen this yet. No, it's been sitting in my queue for about a month yeah. and I need to just sit down and watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's out in the UK already, but if you're watching this in the States, I think it's the 5th of October it comes out yeah. uh, on release. Um, it's out on DVD and Blu-ray and uh, you know, obviously digital uh, if you want to view it online. All to do with the very famous nightclub, which was short-lived sadly. I think it was only a few years, wasn't it? Three yeah. years it lasted, but it started in 1977. So many A-list celebrities took part in going there and enjoying the night. And of course, infamously, it all ended on, on a sour note really, because the co-owners were involved in yeah. tax evasion. When you walk through those blacked out doors, you were in another world. Andy Warhol, Calvin Klein, Elizabeth Taylor, Mick Jagger. We all know it as being this club that many people relished and enjoyed. But this is all to do with the relationships, I suppose, of the people involved. Yeah. How different is it from the move, the famous movie 54 with Nev Campbell and Ryan Fink? I haven't Bay. seen the movie yet. Oh, you haven't? No. Okay, so it came I've out in the 90s, it. didn't it? Yeah, I've seen that movie. I yeah. love that movie, but I haven't seen the documentary, and you're the opposite, so... Is the movie all to do with the highs of Studio 54. And the lows. Um, so the 54 movie kind of is based around Ryan Felipe's character and him falling in sort of love with one of the actresses that played by Nev Campbell who um, frequents the nightclub and t tells his story from just wanting to be an outsider to making his way inside the club as a, as a bartender busboy. Yeah. Lots of shirtless scenes of Ryan Felipe, you know. Nice. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I need to see in this his glory movie. days. He still looks just as good today as he did back then. And he's, my, and he's our age, too. Yeah. So, anyways. Um, yeah, but I love the movie. Um, I've actually been to Studio 54 because uh, it's a theater now. So, I saw Cabaret with Alan Cumming in Studio 54. Right. And I can tell you, just like walking around Studio 54, you can actually feel. There's like an energy that you really? can you're just like, oh my God, there's so much debauchery, so much famous debauchery that happened in here. It emulates off the walls. It's such a weird feeling when wow. you're inside there. How amazing that you've been there. Yeah, it's still open in New York. It's yeah. a theater now, but it still says 54 on the outside. Yeah. Well, you asked how different is it to the movie. Um, this obviously has a lot of interviews that have never been seen before. So it's obviously interviews that have been made especially for this documentary, particularly yeah. with um, Ian Schrager, one of the co-owners, but of course, Steve Rubell. Uh, died back in the late 80s. For p hardcore fans of not just the club, but also the movie as well, it offers something more. And it does have some footage in there that I don't think has been seen before. I'm thinking one scene, especially where a very young Michael Jackson is, is seen chatting back, backstage of the club. Ooh. And he is like really enthusiastic about the club and just really passionate about it. Yeah. And it's good to see that footage. It's good to see a lot of the footage that you know, uh, fr from a music fan's point of view as well, yeah. some of the stars that have been there, and of course, you know, famously Grace Jones, dance naked at the club. And, yeah. You know, it's got the such a history. The disco grannies. Disco and, grannies. Yeah. It was hot, sexy. It's like an adult amusement park. It is so preposterous. We both came from Brooklyn. They had this understanding that they were getting out and they were going to do something big together. We wanted the ultimate nightclub. Beautiful models, celebrities with gay men, transgenders, and it all started blending. A world of fantasy that absolutely exploded. You know, so much went on in that club. And like you say, if you're, if you're there at the club now, uh -huh. at, at that theatre, you can feel some of the history that, that, that happened in the past. Yeah, absolutely, Ken. There's a, okay, I have to ask this question because we watch a lot of documentaries. Yes. Yeah. Some not so good as others. How is this in terms of documentary style and storytelling? And oh, it's captivating. Is it? Yeah, absolutely. That's because always my little fear with documentaries because some of like, some of them tell great stories but they don't execute this they don't execute the like the editing or something together. Oh, it's, it's well executed because you've got a bit of everything. It's not just talking heads, yeah. which I, I think I would be interested in just on its own, but because it shows footage that I haven't seen before. Because you can tell that Ian Schrager still has a lot of torment there because of what happened, obviously, with being arrested and obviously with, you know, with his co-partner passing away, Steve passing away. So you can tell there's a lot of sadness, but he doesn't reveal too much 
I think there's still a lot of mystery. So I'm guessing that there will be another documentary, I would imagine, maybe five or ten years later down the line. I'd like to think so because it didn't it didn't reveal everything for me. Yeah. But I quite like that. I quite like the fact that there's still a bit of mystique. Sex was in the air. There were mattresses in the basement. The amount of drugs was profound. Everyone felt like they had to be there. But people started to get angrier because they couldn't get in. You can't have this much popularity without somebody wanting to take it down. I am always fascinated by New York nightlife, especially in the past and how uh, infamous it was. Like, I'm a big fan of, uh, of the movie Party Monster. Oh, yeah, I love that film. Yeah, and yeah. I love that, like, whole concept of the, the, club kid, yeah, the club kids. And, you know, it's just like everyone wants, like... The police just want to break down everyone's fun, yeah. you know? I mean, if your tax evasion is one thing, okay, yeah, pay your taxes. <laughs> well, you, you know, think like, about the drugs involved as yeah, well. I mean, it's everything, isn't it? Yeah, true, true. But uh, I don't know. It's just those, those stories about, you know, New York nightlife that sets the tone for, you know, what nightlife should really be like. All of a sudden, the lights were on, the police were there. It was like the reality was in your face. The basement had bags of cash and drugs. The feds, mafia, the White House, they definitely messed with the wrong people. Controversy was like a moth to a flame. It's kind of sad when you see good things go away. Well, I think it's living life to the max, isn't it? These people that went there and celebrated, they really were living life. Yeah. Because Can't you just do everything legally? Like <laughs> Be there's got to be a way. There's got to yeah. be a way to do everything legally. But you think still of the memories fun, you know? too. I mean, you know, lives changed forever for people that went to Studio Fifty Four, and also the history of music too. I mean, you wouldn't have had music that we have today because of that club. And yeah. it's not just to do with producers, because obviously producers went there too. It was, it was real, real talent that does were it, involved. Um, does it delve into maybe the fall of disco too? I mean, does does it talk about a little bit? Because about you know, disco, disco, disco really went took a nosedive, yeah, and that it does have, mention that. that. I mean, affected Studio Fifty. I don't think that's obviously the the priority of the documentary, but it it doesn't shy away from that. It does mention it. I only brought that up because I remember at Winter Music Conference and seeing Niall Rogers talk about that era of music yeah. and how he was at Studio 54 and he said that really the disco sex movement really was very detrimental to a lot of musicians yeah and that's when it all the disco finished that, yeah, it? yeah. The disco um, that I'm time. guessing there'll be another thing on it so I mean there have been documentaries about disco sucks but yeah um, maybe we'll see another documentary from the producers of this that dwells on that just on its own this was revolutionary I was riveted, I thought it was fantastic, and it was so good to see an update of it too, because obviously it hasn't gone away from from our thoughts and yeah. from history. It's, it's a very important part of the disco history. disco still around too, so. So check it out, Studio 54, not the movie, it's the documentary, and maybe we'll get an update from you when you've seen it, because I think you definitely need to see it, because I think you'll love it. Sounds good. It's four stars for me, by the way. I haven't seen it. <laughs> <I can't say. laughs> and we'll see you next time, thanks for watching.